There's many things in life that I got wrong. Four SAT questions. But there's one thing for sure, and that is going to be starting off our morning with the churro. After my cup of coffee. We're in Europe. Chill out. first day here in Madrid and we're going to start it right we're gonna go to club another club a club no sleep club but instead of club it's gonna be restaurants We got our puros and churros. Look how thick that is. <laughs> like the hot chocolate that we're used to. Nah, babe, that's bootleg. This is the real hot chocolate. So puros are the thicker versions and churros are the thin versions. And Churreria Santa Ana has been open since 1890. And this is an old, old, old establishment. And you know that they're OG because they don't let you film inside. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of shows, you know, almost this like swagger. Like, yeah, I've been open for 200 years. Like, I don't need well, other people telling me that it's good. They have that pride and you can really, really feel it. But the owner's incredibly nice and the churros are incredibly cheap as well. So let's try the puros, but they're massive. And it has like a star anise kind of like cross section, like Patrick from Spongebob, but it's just elongated into a churro. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I'm gonna try it just as is. Mmm, super crispy, light and fluffy. You can see how and the inside is really nice and airy. Now for the money shot. This is wild. Mmm, it's warm. Is velvety. The outer layer of the puros gently like soaks up the hot chocolate, but the inside is nice and moist. And the combination of the two is so good. And what I didn't realize about Spanish style churros is that it's not coated in cinnamon sugar. And all the churros that I've had in my life, including the ones from amusement parks, they were all coated in like a very thick sugar coating. But this, because you have the chocolate as the sweetener, doesn't have that onto the churros and in typical fashion wherever we go construction follows us oh there's a bike tour Hola. Uh. wow that wouldn't fly in denmark <laughs> churros perfect shape look how thin and like the edges are will it fit <laughs> that's what she said mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta sprinkle in these jokes come on i'm tina Choi. I don't know if it's illegal for me to start eating it from the center But you know what? My churro, my rules Mmm Wow I really like the wishbone structure to the churro mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm like double fisting churros into my mouth <laughs> but when you're a baby in Korea and you learn how to use chopsticks like these are what the trainer chopsticks look like But man, the churros are so good and there's like a different quality to the puros versus the churros The churros are much more crispier and crunchy whereas the puros is more soft and airy and pillowy So it really depends on which school of thought you are like if you like crunchy then go for the churro If you like soft then go for the puro personally I think I like the puros better. Can't wait to see what more things to eat in Madrid.
market isn't only just for produce either. There's like everything inside it. There's like t-shirt shop, bookstores, there's even a place where you can fix your keys. And it's a one-stop shop made up of all these small stores to make this cute little bazaar in the center. And I love it so much. I could imagine myself doing groceries here. And I feel like I said that the same thing in the Philippines. And I feel like this culture kind of originated from Spain and then really spread out to different regions like Philippines, Mexico, a lot of the Spanish colonies. And you can really see some of the similarities. Okay, they even have a laundromat inside, which is like so damn smart. Imagine putting your laundry cycle in doing your groceries and then moving the laundry cycle, finishing your groceries, picking up laundry and groceries at the same time. Genius. So we're going to our next spot and I am in the mood to get a little morsels. Not completely like a full lunch per se. I want nibbles and Madrid is really the city of nibbles. There's one thing that you're gonna have. There's, well, there's many things that you're gonna have, but the most important thing that you're gonna have is tapas. Okay, so we're here at Bar Cruise and the drink that you need to drink at around 1 p.m. on a Monday is definitely going to be vermouth. Whoa. Honestly, it tastes good for your health. Like it tastes medicinal. I feel like it would heal me. Like I, I don't feel like this is alcohol that makes you feel worse about yourself. I feel like this is alcohol that makes you younger. <laughs> I'm at an age where I care about that. Okay, so we need to be very smart with what we're ordering. We're gonna get chopitos, navajas, razor clams. I love these like small 30 centimeter steel tabletops. The glass, the vibe, the ambience, the vermouth is so refreshing. Good food, good drinks, the perfect match. The mushrooms with the jamón, fantastic. So simple, so easy, but so flavorful and free. That's very important. The thing that I've noticed about a lot of Spanish kitchens is that they're incredibly small, but despite being small, it's incredibly effective. Like there's so much things, there's so many things on the menu, and it, maybe it's because very ingredient focused, and some of the techniques that they use is more to really bring out the flavors of the ingredients, so it doesn't really require that big of a fancy big kitchen like French kitchens, it can be small and compact. It's homey, it's comforting, and it is going to be the food that you really, really crave and want that you can eat all day long. That's how I feel. So we have some grilled razor clams with a little bit of salt, lemon juice, and a chopped up fine flat leaf parsley. Well, oh, this is like everything I want in summer. Grilled, fresh, acidic, with a little bit of herbaceousness. These razor clam shells, Remind me of boba straws. I'm just making sure I get all that juice. Sweet, succulent, and just briefly touched on the grill. Carbs for the day, which are patatas gravas. And on top of it is just smothered in chili sauce. Looks absolutely gorgeous. And the crust on that potato, you can see that the potato, just like my cuticles. I love it even when like it kind of gets a little bit smushed because it creates ridges and it stands up to the sauce. The sauce smothered on top is acidic, it's a little spicy. There's notes of black pepper in it. And the potato is so crispy. It's so crispy, I don't even know where to begin. When it comes to potato dishes, the Spaniards, they just, they figured it out. They figured out the secret sauce. Baby squid, perfectly battered, deep fried. Whole, simple, not overcooked. The head is nice and juicy. The tentacles are super crispy. And dusted in like the tiniest bit of fine salt, gently coating the baby squid. Insane. Insane. This is one of the best things I've tried in my life. I like that there's a lot of people that eat alone here in Spain because you just do it for the food. And you don't care about anything else, just good food. Honestly, Everyone's happy eating here at Bar Cruise. I didn't realize that the vermouth was strong because it was sweet. So I am 
red as a gambas, cooked. Mucho, 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 simplemente mucho amor. So this is our first gambas ajillo. So gambas means shrimp and ajillo means garlic. So this is the shrimp dish that I feel like is the most popular dish in Spain. So it's shrimp briefly cooked in olive oil, peppers, garlic, parsley, oily and it's bubbling and I love this clay pot that they all come in and it's a similar clay pot that we saw in Basque country, Oshua. So what's really great about these clay plates is that it retains heat and it keeps it warm for a long time and you want gambas to be warm for a long time because it has a lot of oil. If it gets cold, it's gonna create like a film on the top and get solidified and you do not want that. It's salty, it's oily, it's very very garlicky and the shrimp is sweet and probably my favorite part about eating gambas ajillo is dipping the bread in just unthinkable amounts of olive oil. It's really like the best version of garlic bread. And with some beer outside in the beautiful Madrid sun, can't get better than this. Salud. Honestly, all the seafood that we've had here in Spain has been phenomenal. It's just simple and light and like not that much cooking when it comes to the seafood and I feel like with seafood because it's so delicate that's what it needs you know wow I'm like talking about how great the seafood is but then just only eating the bread right now <laughs> I love how the owner when we were ordering um, the beers we ordered a small one because I get Asian glow and we have to drink a lot tonight really judged us hardcore he was like that's so embarrassing. Like, girly, are you for reals right now? Is the look that he gave me. I got like major side eye energy. So, we're here at Casa Amadeo Los Caracoles. Caracoles means snails, and that's exactly what we're gonna have, and that's the local specialty here in Madrid. So, it's snails stewing in hot, spicy tomato broth, and it gets very, very rowdy in here. So if the French have escargot, Spanish have caracoles. So this is stewed with chorizo and it used to be a very much commoner meal but now it's a delicacy that really represents Madrid. Briny, a little salty, really great complement with the chorizo and like the chorizo broth makes the broth like really nice and red and oily and the oil is running to the top. The snails are quite lean and very protein heavy so the mixture between like the fatty chorizo and the broth and the bite coming from the snails is really really nice perfect bar snack and for every bar snack salut i feel like every culture that's gourmands eat pig ear you know in the u.s pig ear is mostly as like a dog snack, but really you shouldn't because all that cartilage is like really nice texture, has a nice bite, and it's rich in collagen, so it's good for your skin. It's fatty, it melts in your mouth, but at the same time, that collagen texture is like really, really nice. The snail, definitely a little bit more for the adventurous eater, I would say. But the ear is actually super easy. But I mean, I'm not the right person for you to ask. If you're a picky eater, I eat everything. And what do I say? Don't yuck my ale. I'm gonna try a little bit of the pimentos, and the pimentos look insane. We also made the brief mistake of ordering too much and getting too excited in one place. Pimentos, fantastic. Salty, oily, sweet, bitterness. 
That's perfect to complement with some of the heavier food. And the thing with this kind of food is that it's like hearty. And it's using the cuts that aren't the most prime. And it's cheap, it's filling, it's delicious. And that's what you want, especially after a long, hard days of work. In a perfect way to unwind and start your night, maybe. And the vibe here is immaculate. Like, you order by yelling, there's no servers. It's really, you get your own orders from the bar. And uh, that's also part of the reason why they're able to keep all their menus so affordable and also a local favorite for both tourists and uh, the people who live around here. Super fun. Honestly, vibe, getting a beer after work, just something greasy, something spicy, something just crunchy in a cartilage way. I know it doesn't sound that appealing, but trust me, when you try it, you're gonna get it. When in Madrid, must try snails. <laughs> Buenos dias, doobies. Another morning in Madrid and when in Madrid, honestly, you should have churros not once but twice but every day that you're in Madrid, you should have churros and that's exactly what we're gonna do because we love churros, no other reason than that So we're going to Muniz and it's a local tapas bar that is in the heart of La Latina and it is a local local favorite and it was recommended by our hotel staff so we're gonna go check it out the area we're living in is called La Latina and it is really the hub for all the best food here in Madrid in my opinion and not only is there really good um, Spanish food but there's also so many different cultures coexisting here uh, the first night we arrived I was really craving something spicy and rice so we went to this Sengalese restaurant and it was absolutely amazing the mafe there was crazy crazy good but yeah we're here La Nunes is so good but you kind of don't need the chocolate I actually almost prefer it just as is because it's so good and like a good churro is also a little salty and I like that and I like that a lot and the way that he's making it is like so cool you get the dome you have this um, compressor thing on the top and then you wheel it down and you push down the dough and the dough that they use is a cooked dough in order to make it really nice and crispy uh, and right before the dough hits the oil he kind of pinches it together so it creates this wishbone shape because the dough is quite sticky you use like two long silver chopsticks to kind of break it apart making sure that it doesn't doesn't stick the way you fish out the churros you kind of like weave it through like a needle in between the churros so that it hangs multiple at once you let some of the excess oil drop off and then cool down before serving it to guests that's why the deep fryer is uh, shaped round. Yeah. Ah. Our only poros um, fried round like this and not churros. Really? This is uh, typically in, in Madrid. Madrid. Yeah, uh, in poros. Valencia, all your countries. Yeah. The, um, the churro and porra is the same. Oh. Here with a churro with, with the this um, porras, mm -hmm. like a psycho. Oh. It's, it's more typical in, Maj in Madrid. Madrid. My favorite puros, which are the thick churros, is my favorite because it's not just crispy, I like the soft texture and it really really reminds me of the Chinese yotiao. 
The pearl sear is my favorite. It's super salty, and there's like that nice like sea salt flavor that comes through. It's like a savory donut. I think, that that's the, I think that's the best way to put it. I love that it's salty. It's 10 o'clock, but Spain sleeps later and wakes up later. That's the overall vibe I get. And as a product night owl, this city really like speaks my language. After a night of drinking vermouth and wine and a bunch of tapas, you feel a little hangover and you need a little jump start to get you going in the morning. And you want something greasy and puros and churros are really the answer to those like hangover cures for a lot of madrilenos. And I'm definitely feeling that. Like I'm, I woke up this morning so puffy. But hopefully this salt will probably not help me deep up. <laughs> but hey, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Dude, Alberto, the goat, he was so kind explaining like the difference between the puros and the churros and I feel like we really got the true Madriano experience, eating like a local, eating churros and fried things and coffee and tortas. Like, I love Madrid so much. And especially with all the kind people, I love you, Madrid. Yeah, and that's around like a four hours drive. And we need to be stocked up on some nibbles to keep us going and drive on our little road trip. So we're gonna go do some little shopping, maybe some fruits, maybe some patatas fritas. So everything here is from the southern part of Spain because the temperament is temperament. Temperature is much higher and it's a lot warmer. So all of these fruits are available. And um, and these are sugar plums, right? And these are the ones that we picked when we were up in um, San Sebastian. Cuatro, por favor. Tastes better because it's free. Oh, so good. So over there are the pimentos that we got yesterday um, that are usually grilled and they are massive like the paprikas that you see in grocery stores in the u.s are about wee big but then here it's this big it's sweeter it's more bitter and there's more flavor to them and it's just better it's you versus the guy that she told you not to worry about Okay, bye-bye.